Hi everyone, welcome to the Everlasting Gospel, JesusTheGoodNews.com weekly Bible study. I'm Gerilyn Davis, minister to the unsaved and humble servant of Master Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ, our blessed hope, folks, the only begotten Son of God the Father, fully God, fully man, sinless, the perfect Lamb of God, who freely chose to lay his life down for us. He shed his blood, died on the cross, and arose the third day to conquer sin and death, to destroy the works of the devil. So we, through our free will choice, could have the opportunity to believe on him and commit our lives to serve him. We are descendants of Adam and Eve, folks, who fell from grace when they rebelled against Almighty God. Their sin is passed down to every one of us. We are spiritually dead without Jesus Christ. Very important to realize that, folks. Hell is a real place. Don't go there. Choose Jesus Christ. Choose to believe on him. Realize what he has done for all of us. Realize it today. Amen. Welcome to the channel. I invite you to like, share, and subscribe to partake of the pure living word of Almighty God. Jesus Christ is the word made flesh who dwelt among us over 2,000 years ago now, folks. And one day he will return for those who are waiting for him. Something again to consider. We are continuing this week in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. It's a continuation of a letter the Apostle Paul had written to the converted Jews, those who were now part of the body of Christ. They were enduring as Paul commended them on this. And they were also experiencing persecution, like everyone who follows Jesus Christ as well as experiencing pressure from the Jews who chose to stay in the Old Testament law of legalism, pressuring them to return to the ways of their forefathers rather than being a part of the body of Christ. That continues today, folks. There are many Jews who are saved who have now come to believe on Jesus Christ as their Messiah. However, there are a lot that are still adhering to the old ways. It's important to keep them in prayer as everyone who's not saved. Amen. So Hebrews chapter 10. If you are in need of a Bible, check out HTTPS, JesusTheGoodNews.com. Click on the Bibles tab and your free Bible would be sent to you. It would be my privilege to send it to you. Or borrow one, buy one. If there's one in your house, dust it off, open it up. Ask the Lord God to give you understanding of his word. He is faithful and he will do so, folks. This book is the only book in the entire world that can benefit all of us for eternity because it is inspired by the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. No other book can claim that, folks. And that's why the Bible is constantly under attack, being called of all things hate speech. And that's why the minions of Satan have influenced other people to come up with these false Bible translations to add to and take from God's word, something he clearly warns us about in Revelation chapter 22. It's important to consider your source when you're reading God's word. Very important. The King James Bible the King James Version, not the New King James Version, is the only version that is directly translated from the original Hebrew and Greek text. The closest thing to the Hebrew Bible that there is. And also the only translation that is not copyrighted. And that is because it is the pure word of Almighty God. Other translations are copyrighted because man has put his spin on it. Therefore, it is perverted. Something to consider today. Again, your source. 
I'm going to pray over the message. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, dear Lord, for the blessing of another day. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your patience, dear Lord. You are such a just and righteous God. You are not a respecter of persons. And you love all of us because you created us in your image, dear Lord. Thank you for wanting all of us to come to repentance through Jesus Christ. Thank you for blessing us with the way out of eternal condemnation. Thank you for waiting and patiently waiting for those who are not saved yet to come to salvation. Thank you for shining your light into this spiritually darkened world, Lord, to provide us the hope that we need, the only hope. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to share your precious holy word with others. I pray you equip me to deliver your message so it's pleasing to you and encouraging and enlightening to those who hear it, that they are encouraged to draw closer to you through your word, Jesus Christ. Cast out all hindrances, dear Lord. And thank you again. And I thank you most of all for your precious, only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. To you be all the glory, dear Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, folks. So again, Hebrews chapter 10. Again, Paul is continuing to encourage, instruct, and warn and exhort the converted Jews at this time. Of course, again, this message is intended for all of us. Amen. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the comers thereunto perfect. So again, Paul is comparing the Old Testament law of the Levitical priesthood that the Lord God had given to the Jewish people. The Levites were one of the tribes of Israel. And he set the Levites apart for himself to be the Levitical priesthood, beginning with Aaron during the time of Moses. The Jews during this time were the only ones who could receive atonement for their sins through animal sacrifice at the hands of the high priest who offered for himself and for the people once a year the Levitical priesthood. And of course, this had to be done on a regular basis, folks. So Paul is comparing that to once Jesus Christ shed his blood, died on the cross for all of us, the veil in the temple, the Old Testament temple, was torn in two, as scripture tells us. When Jesus bowed his head and died, after he said, it is finished, he fulfilled the Old Testament animal sacrifices, the Levitical priesthood was no longer required. As Paul says here, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Now Jesus calls us to be perfect in Matthew 5.48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. We have the capacity to be perfect through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Nothing that we can do for ourselves. Nothing. And your Father in heaven, yes, we are created in the image of Almighty God, but we are not considered his children until we are saved and serving Jesus Christ. Amen. Continuing here in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 2, For then would they not have ceased to be offered? because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Indeed, it is not possible, folks. That's why we needed Jesus Christ, the better covenant. Amen. Wherefore, when he cometh 
into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come, in parentheses, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Indeed. So we read this scripture in the book of Psalms, chapter 40. Now continuing here. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither haddest pleasure therein which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second. That he may establish the second, Jesus Christ, the better covenant. Jew and Gentile alike are free to come to Jesus Christ for forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. The Lord has brought his divine plan full circle, folks, through the Jewish people. Jesus Christ being in the genealogy line of the Jewish people. Amen. Praise Jesus. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Once. He sacrificed himself on that cross for us once. It is finished. Amen. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Amen. From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Indeed. Amen. Again, we're reminded here in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1, For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Indeed. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Amen. Now the Lord in this instance is speaking about the Jewish people. We know through the Old Testament, the Lord had set the Jewish people apart for him because Jesus Christ is in the lineage of the Jewish people, the lion of the tribe of Judah, of the lineage of David. So for this reason, they are the chosen nation of Almighty God. Amen. And what Paul is saying here, as the Lord says, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. Throughout the Old Testament, the Jewish people turned to the Lord. They turned away from the Lord. When they intermixed with the heathen that the Lord warned them not to do and started to observe their ways, idol worship. But we know in the end times, the Lord will be reconciled with the Jewish people. All Israel shall be saved. The Lord has reserved a remnant. We read about that in the book of Zechariah, chapter 13. A third will be refined and come through the fire, the intense persecution of the tribulation through the Antichrist, and will be reconciled with Almighty God. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. Amen. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Hallelujah. Now, where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. 
having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Again, the Old Testament tabernacle, there was a veil separating one area from where the mercy seat was located, the Holy of Holies, where the high priest alone would go through the veil to offer that sacrifice in the presence of Almighty God. So Jesus Christ, he became the sacrifice, so it was no longer needed for the high priest, the Levitical priesthood. So now, as Paul is calling the brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's for all of us, folks, Jew and Gentile alike. By a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say, his flesh. Through the veil. In Hebrews chapter 9, we read, verse 3, and after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, verse 8, the Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as yet the first tabernacle was yet standing. Jesus Christ, his body, the perfect tabernacle, no more veil needed, no more Old Testament law needed. No more Levitical priesthood needed. Amen. Praise Jesus. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Amen. I'm going to go here into Hebrews chapter 4, and that is verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Moving on here. In Hebrews chapter 10. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Amen. Praise Jesus. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Amen. Once we are saved and part of the true body of Christ, folks, we are to gather with one another. Very important to stay strong in our faith in Jesus Christ to encourage one another, to pray for one another, to help one another if someone has a need. That is the true body of Christ. Now, many people will use this scripture that I just read in verse 25. I'll use an example that my husband and I experienced a lot of prejudice when we were attending a certain church. And it was because my husband is black, of course I'm white. And prior to the fact that uh, my husband and I were uh, started dating, the women that were in this church were friendly to me. But once they were aware that my husband and I were dating, they acted like I was a complete stranger. We brought it to the pastor, and the pastor did not deal with it. He swept it under the rug. So the prejudice and hypocrisy continued, folks, and my husband and I stopped going there because of that. It was hindering our walk with the Lord. And we prayed to the Lord diligently on this matter. 
And once we stopped going to that place, a lot of these people were saying, using this scripture, using it against us and saying, you're forsaking uh, the assembling of yourselves with the body of Christ. And what the Holy Spirit revealed to my husband and me was it was not the true body of Christ because if it were, the prejudice and hypocrisy would not be going on within those walls and the person that was in leadership would not permit it to go on. It, it would have been corrected, not swept under the rug. So the Lord had given my husband and me permission to stop going there and he also assured us that where two or three are gathered together in his name, he is in the midst of us. Amen. So that's very important. What Paul is speaking about here, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, that is the true body of Christ, folks, not the apostate church. Not intermixing with gossiping, tail-bearing, and backbiting. That is not the true church. Moving on here, for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Very important to realize that. Indeed. I'm going to go here into Acts chapter 2, verses 41 through 47. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. That is the perfect example of the true church, the body of Christ. Again, not the hypocrisy and prejudice. Now going on here, if a person, after they're saved, willfully decides to go back into the world, backsliding, falling away, sinning willfully after they receive that knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins in that respect. I'm going to go here into Hebrews chapter 6. Something very important. Again, it was uh, a message that the Lord had me give a couple weeks ago. You can lose your salvation. Now, once we are saved, we are sealed. But a person, by their free will choice, can choose to walk away from that gift and fall away through their own choice. So in Hebrews... Chapter 6, verses 4 through 6, where it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Very important, folks. So through your free will choice, it is possible to lose your salvation. And once that happens, that's it. As Paul says here in Hebrews 10, if we sin willfully after this, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Indeed. In Zephaniah chapter 1, one of the Lord's prophets, and that is verses 14 through 18. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall 
cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. Continuing here in verse 18, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Again, those that choose to be enemies of Almighty God, to walk away, to sin willfully. Indeed. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sorer punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despot unto the Spirit of grace. So Paul is warning the converted Jews and he's also speaking of those Jews who were still adhering to the Old Testament law, trying to drag these Jews who were saved back into the ways of their forefathers, dead religion. He's speaking of that as well, a warning indeed. Not just for them, but for all of us today, folks. If you have the knowledge that something you do is sin and you continue to do it, you're an enemy of God. Plain and simple. I'm going to continue here in verse 29. I'm going to want to repeat that. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despot unto the Spirit of grace. Once we are saved, we are filled with the Holy Spirit of Almighty God, folks. Doing despot to the Spirit of grace. Wow. An abomination. I'm going to read here in the book of Matthew, chapter 12. And that is verse 31. This is Jesus Christ speaking. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. It shall not be forgiven. And he continues here in verse 32, And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Very serious. Paul, again, was warning the converted Jews and all of us today, folks, to not blaspheme the Holy Spirit. An unholy thing. Indeed. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Indeed. Now let's see. I'm going to go here into Hebrews chapter 2. And that's verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. Amen. Continuing here in Hebrews chapter 10. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. The Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Indeed, folks, a fearful thing. Indeed. 
but call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of affliction. So Paul is reminding the body of Christ, the converted Jews, that he's writing this letter to, call to remembrance the former days when they were first saved, when they first proclaimed Jesus Christ as their Messiah, believed on him, and became part of the body of Christ. Indeed. Ye endured a great fight of afflictions, partly whilst ye were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst ye became companions of them that were so used. Indeed. I'm going to go here into 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And that is verse 9. For I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. The calling of apostle is one of the gifts that the Lord gives to those in authority positions within the church. The first one on the scene to share the gospel, to share the good news of Jesus Christ, to establish the churches in whatever area of the world the Lord calls them to go, as he called Paul during this time. Paul endured a lot of persecution. The first one on the scene People had never heard this radical message preached before. He endured a lot of persecution, but was equipped by the Holy Spirit to reach out to the Gentiles and the Jews, kings and rulers throughout the Roman Empire. Amen. Praise Jesus. Continuing here in Hebrews chapter 10. For ye had compassion of me in my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Amen. This life is temporary, folks. We who are part of the body of Christ have in heaven a better and enduring substance. Indeed. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Amen. I'm going to go here into Matthew chapter 5, verse 12. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. In this instance, Jesus Christ was giving his Sermon on the Mount, speaking to the Jewish people. But today, once Jesus Christ shed his blood, died on the cross, arose the third day, conquered sin and death, destroyed the works of the devil, the veil was torn, Jew and Gentile alike. So that goes for all of us, folks. We who are part of the body of Christ will be persecuted just as he was persecuted, just as in Old Testament times the prophets were persecuted. It's something to be aware of. And we are warned about it. We are instructed on it. And we are encouraged to endure. Amen. Continuing here in Hebrews chapter 10. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Amen. There will come a day when Jesus Christ will return to this earth. Father God, thank you. He will return. He will return first for those who are waiting for him. In what people call the rapture. Caught up. Then there will come a time when he will set his feet upon the Mount of Olives. To establish his thousand year reign on this earth. And perfect justice will be served. Praise your Father God. 
I'm going to go here into Colossians chapter 3, verse 24. So Colossians chapter 3, verse 24. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. I will continue here in verse 25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Almighty God, praise your Father God again, is a righteous judge, not a respecter of persons. Indeed. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Again, somebody falling back into the world, going back to their old ways, blaspheming the Holy Spirit, willfully sinning. Indeed. I'm going to go here into 2 Peter chapter 3. And that is verses 9 and 10. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. But is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Indeed. The Lord is requesting that I read uh, verse 11 as well. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Amen. And continuing here, I'm going to go into Romans chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. False messengers, hirelings, apostates, congregation members who fall away. The wrath of God will be upon them. Indeed. Paul concludes this section of his letter with verse 39. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Amen. If you are saved, stay close to Jesus Christ. Stay in your word. Study it. If you are not saved, think about it today, folks. Call on the name of the Lord while you still have the breath to do so. Again, I invite, I invite you to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Also, check out All Glory to Abba here on YouTube. And I pray that Almighty God continues to get your attention. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.